one here on earth. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed. Jesus, there is power in the name 
name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is power, there is power in the name of Jesus.
every chain, to break 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 every child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer of God, that you are no longer a slave to fear. Tonight, let me begin to declare it. Let me begin to speak the word of God. Declare the word of God upon this situation, upon this is a season of sozo, a season of deliverance, season of salvation. Begin to proclaim the word of God tonight. Declare the word. Let God hear you speak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, because your word says as you put on your hearing that you do. Tonight, we are declaring our freedom. We are declaring that we are the redeemed of the Lord. Uh, your, word, your word says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Tonight, Father, we stand upon the promise of the word that we are no, we are no longer a slave. To, to see, we're no longer a slave to fear because we are the children of God, a chosen people, a peculiar people declared to show for the glory of God. But at tonight, have your way, let your will alone be done. Holy Spirit, do that which only you can do tonight. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah! 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We stand upon the premise of your word. As your elect, as your chosen, as your called. A people set apart 
to show forth your glory. For tonight, let your word be established. And let the nation see that you are God. And you are faithful to your word. And every word spoken of further, you watch them to, you watch them to perfection. Let the name, uh, name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray tonight. If you are ready to pray tonight, if you brought the Bible, come with me to Second Corinthians. If you, can we go? Let go sit down. You can come and just sit there. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are in a season of sozo. A season of deliverance. Salvation and healing. We are going to stand on, on the premise of, war, of the word of God tonight. We are going to take the word of God to him. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 4. Simple verse. And we are going to pray with this verse tonight. Hallelujah. The Bible said the God of this world has blinded the mind. The God of this world is, is in operation. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to take authority. We are supposed to take authority. So tonight, let's pray. Let's rise on our feet. As we pray, to remove certain influence in the life of men, in the life of people. Declare the word of God tonight because the Bible said, you are, you are chosen for this cause. To permit God to act that way the, the the word you send forth will cause men. The, when you send forth your word, the angels we have sent you to work with. So declare to let's begin to declare tonight. Because I am a sataria. Le brunga dia adu sita bada. Tele masia ke deringa hasupa. For I thank you for many you have you have called to yourself. Because your word says, except Father, you yourself draw men to yourself. No man can come to Christ. That men will indeed come to Christ to know that the benefit and the good. That you have released uh, to mankind through Christ, oh Father, that, yeah, yeah, man, that the God of this world will no longer have influence upon their life. That tonight we proclaim liberty. Tonight we, we, we declare healing. Tonight, Father, we declare salvation upon the nation, upon this city, upon the people, Father, that your Father, that the heart of men be turned to you. That the, that, that the heart of men, Father, that the heart of men begin to begin to take God, come to you. Begin to acknowledge that Christ uh, came for their redemption. Christ came for their salvation. That Christ was given to us for that, to bring us back to you. That redemption has come. Oh, Randa Hekete, Ladun Shetar Yangaba, Zaro Tebe, Sindar Katayeha, Bato Sindayeha Kata, Lebron Da Seteneba, La Taye Lama Sete, Pray that the light of the gospel, of the glorious gospel, shine upon the heart of men tonight. Destroy every influence of the enemy, of the devil, upon every life. Take authority tonight. Declare tonight, God, that men will begin to realize, will begin to know. We begin to know that Christ came for their sake. That Christ is the gift of God to humanity. That Christ came for our salvation. That Christ came for our redemption. That Christ came that we again man, can be restored back to God. Pray tonight, Chalaga, that no power of the enemy will, will, no, longer, will no longer be able to influence man or to think otherwise. Sing that here. Bandu Sekaya. Lenti Samangu Kaye. La Tale Masaka. Lebron Gatiaba. Holy Masake Telega. Kariam Batsukaye. La Breke Ketayasa. La Moto Singaya. Hallelujah. Lemdia Sipara. Hallelujah. Parinda Sapa. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for destroying the yoke of the enemy upon the life of all you have called, of all you have predestined, oh Father. Thank you for the souls that will be saved, that will be redeemed, that will be reclaimed back, oh Father, to your glorious life. Thank you, Father, for your light that is illuminated in every heart of men to cause them to acknowledge that Christ is our King. Oh, Jitayaba, Holy Man Sikileba. Hasia. So let the light of the God, the greater gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, to shine upon their heart. Limasa, tonight, let's pray. Second prayer point. Pray that they receive spiritual, spiritual sight. Pray that 
every heart, every man, every woman, all that God has redeemed, will receive the spiritual sight to know. <laughs> because he said, the God of this world has blinded, has blinded the mind, not to think. Not to think, but let's take authority to write that their spiritual awareness be restored among to them. Pray, Father, thank you for the restoration of spiritual insight, for spiritual sight to the blind. Oh, for this cause Christ came, that many, Father, will be redeemed, that the glorious light of the gospel of Christ illuminate the heart of men and causes them to see. Ah, thank you, Father, thank you. Oh, that, that tonight you will perfect the wonder, you will do the, ah, the miracle, you will cause men, oh, Father, to desire the things of the kingdom. That, Father, you will cause men, oh, to acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for opening the eyes of all men, causing them to see. Thank you for the spiritual sight. Thank you for spiritual insight into the things of God, into the things of the kingdom. Thank you for spiritual understanding. Thank you, Father, for illuminating our understanding to know that Christ, hey, is our king, that Christ is our redeemer, that Christ is our he is Samate Gika. Or in the is the essence of our existence. Oh Parenda Siakati. Leke Mahasati. Kuran Batiasi. Bando Sikayaba. La to Siri Gada. Enima. Thank you for your grace that is at work in us. Oh, send that ye. Thank you for great grace so far that is at work in this church. We commit every soul. We commit everyone. We commit every family, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every child. Oh, Father, we commit them to your holy hand tonight. Holy Spirit, come dear. You that illuminate your heart. You that bring us to understanding. You that elevate. You that bring us to a place of redemption. Perfect your work in the hearts of all men tonight. All them that ye restore to us tonight. Our spiritual sight. Our Raman said that cost more men, oh Father, to see the glory. The glorious gospel of Christ. All in That in all things, oh Father, they will acknowledge, they will know, to appreciate, <laughs> oh, Kamala, the things of God, all to the glory. The Bible said in verse 6 of that chapter, for God who, com who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shown in her heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God to the face of Jesus Christ. Say, for the God, for it is God who commanded light to shine. It is God who commanded light to shine. So tonight, pray that God will command this same light to shine in the hearts. O masha kari kabako, o zita yele matasegedi, le graga kabu poya siya matusi ya kateya, le gira gamu hosaye, kana hakahe, kana hakahe, kana hakahe. For God, you causes the light to shine upon the heart of all individual. I shall that all them for that that you are predestined, all them that you are for new, all them that you have called to your glory. Father, your word says, it's you that command your light to shine in the hearts of all individuals. Cause your light tonight, O oh Father, to illuminate every heart. Cause your light, O oh Father, to shine forth, to bring understanding, O oh Shinha, to the heart of all men, to acknowledge Christ, that Christ will come to dwell in their heart, that Christ will come to reside in them. Father, that they are the door of their heart be open to Christ. For the Bible says, Hey, Christ is knocking at the door, that whoever opened the door, he will enter. Father, that them as you walk, comfort tonight uh, that will be an illumination that will be an understanding and man for that man's heart will be open to receive uh, the word of god uh, the word that illuminates the word that enlightens the word of god that is able to build us up that man will be built up tonight oh shikabaya brahma musiaki there hallelujah helema katoya pray that even as they hear the word that they will come to Christ. Hallelujah. The first prayer was that the influence of Satan be destroyed. 
and because the Bible says, when you drive the, when you drive Satan, and if it's empty, by the time they come back, it will be double. But pray that even as the as Satan has driven out of the heart of men, Father, that Christ they will allow Christ to come in, that Christ will come in to dwell in them. Oh, Father, thank you for provisions. Thank you for the abundance of your grace. Oh, thank you for the illumination of our heart. Father, that even as men, oh, as men, oh, Father, receive your word. As men receive your word, Father, that it will be uh, 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 the entrance of your word that gives us life. Father, what's it? The entrance of your word, uh, hey, bring it light. Uh, that this light will illuminate, oh, Father. That yeah, as they are illuminated, that Christ will take residence in their hearts. And they will lead to our knowledge. Oh, man, seek Papa. Lebranga to Siaha, Kelly Baha Tota, Lebesi Kama, Lokita Pasupa, Lekisa Padunga Siedri, Labro Cotosiata Papa, Mate Sekiti, Hallelujah, Kurama Siataya. But I will thank you. Blessed be your Holy Father. Thank you, Father, for drawing men to yourself. Thank you for drawing men to yourself. Thank you, Father, for the illumination of our hearts. Thank you for the understanding that is given to all men. Thank you for the revelation of your word. Father, thank you because as your word, the entrance of your word bringeth light. And the light illuminates the heart, the heart of men. Understanding is restored. Oh, yes. Salvation ah, is restored unto them. But I will thank you for, calling, for bringing men and making men vessels of treasures unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For making us treasures on earth. A place for you to reside. Thank you, Father, that you're perfecting and walking through us as a people. We thank you for your grace upon this church. We thank you, Father, for men you are bringing in. Thank you for the abundant doors you are opening. Thank you, Father, above all, for the salvation of souls. That, Father, that to hear your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for illuminating their hearts and causing them to understand and come to the pure gospel of Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that which you will do in this service, in this season of Sozo, that men will be redeemed, and healing will be restored. All to the glory of your Holy Name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh oh, I'm not hearing anybody. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Sozo 20. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are happy to be here this evening? Hallelujah. Just lift those holy hands and begin to wave it to the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm happy to be here this evening. I'm happy to, to, to partake in the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sozo 2018. Oh, Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt your holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just begin to worship the Lord. God, you are awesome. God, you are mighty. God, you are holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are awesome in this place. Lord, you are awesome.
Ship you. 
must worship him. Our God is awesome. Awesome God, how great the art. You alone, mighty in your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Oh, we worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship. lift your hands and begin to worship this mighty God. Our God is mighty. Our God is mighty. Our God is awesome. Oh, Father, we worship you. Holy and holy.
this God. As you worship him, healing is taking place. Deliverance is taking place. Oh, Marabo Sat Ayaba. Father, you are worthy. Oh, there is healing in this place tonight. Father, we worship you. Oh, if you are sick in your body, begin to worship this God. Oh, Father, we worship you. You are awesome, oh God. You are holy. You are mighty, oh God. Oh, begin to receive your healing tonight. Oh, Father, we worship you. As we worship you, God Almighty, healing is taking place. Deliverance is taking place. Oh, lift your hands and begin to worship this mighty God. Oh, Father, we give you all the glory. For you are worthy. Oh, you reign in our lives, oh God. You reign, oh God. Oh, Father, I receive my healing. Oh, God Almighty, I've been set free. Begin to worship this God. As you worship him, you have been delivered. As you worship him, you've been healed. Oh, Rebo Saka Tarababa. Leke Rebo Saka Takayebo Kayeba. Lende Reba Baba. Lift those hands and begin to worship him. Oh, Father, I worship you. Oh, Father, I'm healed. I've been set free. I'm whole, oh God. Oh, because there's healing in your blood. Nabo Rebo Sakaraba. Oh, Father, I'm healed. Oh, my rebo saka taka rebo baby. Leke rebo saka ta poshe kereba. Leke reba worship him. Worship this God. Oh, he's here in our midst tonight. Leke reba karebo sata ye baba. Leke reba baba de rebo saka ya baba. Oh, repon ta ye ba. Oh, Father, we worship you. Oh, leave those hands and begin to worship this God. Our God is a great God. Our God is a great God. He is faithful. Even when we are unfaithful, our God is faithful. You are faithful, oh God. Father, you are righteous. Begin to worship him. Oh, lift those hands and begin to worship this mighty God. My God is mighty. He can move mountains. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we worship you. Oh, Rabo Sakatayaba. Legerebo Senkentereba Baba Shekarabo Satayaba. Oh, Father, we worship you. You are dwelling in our midst, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing, Jesus, we believe, Jesus, there is healing.
Thank you, God. We worship you. There is healing in his name. Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt your holy name. Lift those hands and begin to worship him. Oh, Father, Lord, we receive your healing. Hallelujah. 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 I worship our God. He's worthy to receive all the praise. He's the King of kings, Lord of lords. He's our transformer. He's the one that transforms lives. He's the one that creates life. Acknowledge him tonight. Give it to him tonight. Let him know that you know that you are his, a chosen vessel. Let him know tonight that he is alive in you. That you are alive in him. That with him, we are more than conqueror. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we worship you tonight. We adore you. We ask about all the glory to you tonight. But I thank you for life that are restored tonight. Thank you for hope that are restored. Thank you for souls that are won. Thank you, Father, for the light that is illuminating our every heart tonight. Thank you for your word that is perfecting that which is set for to do in the, in the lives of men tonight. Father, thank you for redeeming this city to yourself. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome you tonight. Do that which only you can do. We commit this service into your holy hand. We ask the Father that every heart that receives your word tonight, do Father, will be transformed, will be renewed, and every door will be open for Christ to come in. And he will come and dwell fully in every heart tonight. Out to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. To the season of Sozo. Season of healing, deliverance, and blessing, restoration. Amen? Hallelujah. We are great grace ministries. We are grace to do what we do. Because the world is our guide. The world is all that we do. Amen? We are on a mission. And that mission is to bring heaven culture to earth. As God originally designed it. God's purpose and God's plan. Amen? And to be able to fulfill this mission, we have what we call the vision. And that is to empower you, empower us, empower every human being to beautify his word with the word of God. Amen? Because the Bible says he sent his word to heal. And that is what, that is all, that's what we do. And that's what, why we exist. Amen? That's why this season is a peculiar season. It's a special season that you can't afford to miss. Hallelujah. So, we have this today. Tomorrow, we, the service starts at 7. And it continues till on Sunday. The service starts at 10 o'clock on Sunday. Amen? Let's invite our friends. Because the most gift you can give, we can give to friends, we can give to people, is to bring salvation, to lead them to Christ. I know you we cannot change people's hearts. We can't change anybody. But the Bible said we are commissioned to take the gospel to the nations. And when they hear the word, the Holy Spirit will have something to work on, to work with in their, in their life, in their, in their hearts. And when that happens, their life will be restored. Amen? Hallelujah. So that is who we are. That is what we do. And what, because we believe in the word, we confess the word. Of God. We declare the word. We speak the word. The, the Bible verse we read in just now, Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, verse 4. Say the God of this world is, has blinded their eyes. We don't let them see the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we have a responsibility to bring this the word of God to them so that when they hear the word, the light is illuminated. They are able to see 
And in verse 6 of that same chapter, the Bible says, it's only God that can cause that light to illuminate in your heart. And that is exactly what we do. So that we, we are not conformed to this world. Though we are in this world, we will not be conformed to this world. And when we are not conformed to this world, what are we expected to do? We speak like God speak. God expected to speak. And that is what, why we, that's what we teach people to do. And that is what we are, we are graced to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. And it's able to transform. Without wasting much time, I want to call on the great, great kids to come and go especially welcome our guests tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. We have acknowledged that you were coming and we prepared something special for you. And God knows that you will be here tonight. And God will richly bless you. Great, great, great kids. Come and give us a welcome song. Hallelujah. Great Grace Ministries, we are one big family. Great Grace Ministries, we are destined for the top. Great Grace Ministries, beautifying your world. Spirituality, we are destined for the top in creativity. We are destined for the top in integrity. We are destined for the top, the top most top is where. Ministries, we are one big family. Great Grace Ministries, we are working for the top. Great Grace Ministries, beautify in your world with the word, with the word. We are destined for the top in creativity. We are destined for the top in individuality. We are destined for the top. The top most top is where we Hallelujah. You are welcome to Great Grace Ministry. You are welcome to the season of Sozo 2018. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. We are so happy that you came. Sister Pat, you are welcome. Thank God for your life, that you are strong and you are healthy. Uh, this time last week was a very difficult time. We thank God that you made it. We are grateful for everyone, especially those that are watching online and those that are present with us. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. 
He comforted people in the, in the time past, and he's here to comfort you. There is nothing that is too difficult for God to do. We believe in God for great things here tonight. We believe in God to touch everyone's heart and everyone's soul. Especially in their areas of their health. We want God. We are believing God for Jesus to manifest himself as a God that heals. No man can heal. No man. So, for the next segment of the program, I want you to really pay attention. Sometimes, when we look at our situation, we think that the load is too much for us to bear. When we look at the people that we rely on to help, they will fail. Our husbands fail. Our wives, they fail. Even our children sometimes fail. But there is only one thing that is sure will not fail. is Jesus Christ. Amen? So this next video will minister to your heart. Receive it. Everything that we are doing here is designed by the Holy Spirit. But it, it needs man to do it. So every person that comes to minister might be when Jesus wants to reach out to you. So be alert. God bless you.
by the grace of God, we have seen face to face a half million souls say yes to Jesus and be plugged into a local church. As crazy as it sounds, our goal at Life Without Limits Ministry is to preach to every single soul on the planet. Seven billion people. We believe that this goal is possible as the Holy Spirit is gathering an army and building up supporters to send us and accomplish this mission. But this all takes support. And yes, I ask for your prayers. Pray for us. Pray for our board. Pray for our staff and our team. But we could not do this much where we've come this far without the people who financially support us in actively sending us to complete the mission before us. We are praying by faith that the Holy Spirit speaks to you about supporting us and becoming a partner in helping us to accomplish this awesome mission ahead. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a clap of fame. Amen. You see, sometimes we think we are disadvantaged. We don't have enough. My face is not fine enough. I don't have enough money. No enough education. Where can I start from? But someone, he has no legs, no arms. He has won over half a million people to Christ. What is our excuse? What is it that you are going through that you think Christ cannot use you to bring happiness for others? My prayer for you tonight is that may the love of Christ through you be unveiled. That may your life bring encouragement to somebody's life. That the love of Christ that forgave us our sins, not counting how bad we were, we shine through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the next person we'll be presenting, Jesus, from Genesis to revelation so let's make welcome peace on my name in genesis jesus christ is the breath of life in exodus he is our passover lamb in leviticus he is our high priest in Numbers, he is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he is the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he is our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kingsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he is our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he is our reigning king. In Ezra, he is the true and the faithful scribe. And in Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of broken down walls and lives. In Esther, he's Mordecai's courage. Job, the timeless redeemer. In Psalms, he is our morning psalm. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom. Ecclesiastics, the time and season. Songs of Solomon, he is the lover's dream. Isaiah, the prince of peace. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Lamentations, the cry for Israel. Ezekiel, the call for sin. Daniel, the stranger in the fire. Hosea, the forever faithful. Joel, the spirit's power. Amos, the strong arms that carry. Obadiah, our Lord and Savior. In Jonah, he's the great missionary. Micah, the promise of peace. 
in Nahum, he is our strength and shield. In Habakkuk and Zephaniah, he brings revival. In Haggai, he restores that which was lost. In Zechariah, he is our fountain. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. And let me tell you, that's just the Old Testament. In Matthew, Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews. In Mark, he is our servant. In Luke, he is the son of man feeling what you feel. In John, he is the son of God. In the spirit-filled book of Acts, he is the reigning fire from heaven. In Romans, he is the righteousness of God. In 1st and 2nd Corinthians, he is the power of love. Galatians, he's your liberty. He set you free from the curse of sin. Ephesians, the head of the church. Philippians, the servant's heart. Colossians, he's your completeness. In 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he is your hope. In 1st Timothy, he is your faith. In 2 Timothy, he is your stability. In Titus, he's the truth. In Philemon, he is our mediator and faithful pastor. In Hebrews, he is our perfection. In James, he is the power behind your faith. In 1 Peter, he is your example. In 2 Peter, he is your purity. In 1 John, he's your life. In 2 John, he is your pattern. In 3rd John, he is your motivation. In Jude, he is the foundation of your faith. And in Revelations, he is your coming king. He is, he is, he is the first and last, beginning and the end. He is the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He was always, is always, and always will be unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised, yet brought healing. He was pierced and eased our pain. He was persecuted yet brought freedom. He was dead and brings life. He was risen and he brings power. The world can't understand him. Leaders can't ignore him. Armies can't defeat him and schools can't explain him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler himself couldn't silence him. The new age can't replace him. And Oprah can't explain him away. He is light, love, longevity, and God. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and Lord. He is holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, and he is pure. His ways are right. His words are eternal. His will is unchanging, and his mind is on me. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. He is my guide and he is my peace. He's my joy and he's my comfort. He's my Lord and he rules my life. Hallelujah. Glory. That's Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That was amazing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to give our tithes and our offering unto this great God. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we are just like our God. Our God is a giver. We don't give out of compulsion. We give because it is in us to give. Hallelujah. And we give because we are blessed. Hallelujah. If you are cutting out a check, make it payable to Great Grace Ministries. And please, at the back of your envelope, write your name and your address clearly for tax purposes. And also, if you're watching us online and you want to join this great ministry in spreading the gospel of God, 
the, the, is on the screen of how to, to support this ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're done writing out your offering, can you stand up and send your offering? It's a seed. So name your seed. Hallelujah. special seeds. Father, it's a privilege to give unto you because all that we have comes from you. But Father, you've given us so much, I will just give you just a token from the abundance you've given us. Father, we pray that as we give, oh God, and that our land will yield this increase in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for people watching us online but also as they give to this ministry, oh Lord, that God Almighty will supply their needs according to your riches and glory in the name of Jesus. And Father, they will know no lack in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we worship and we give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to give our tetan offering joyfully. Hallelujah. God is for me. Nothing can stand against me. God is for me. Hallelujah. Let the living water 
flow over my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and worries are to
precious Holy Spirit of God. Father, we thank you, we give you praise. Father, the hour has come and the time is now. As we share your word, as we testify to Jesus Christ's name, do wonders in our midst. Heal, touch, encourage, build someone up. Holy Spirit, minister to everyone according to their need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. You're welcome once again to Great Grace Ministry and to Sozo 2018. You see, we are going through a very interesting time right now. And um, for every one of this year, I want you to be encouraged that the best is yet to come. I said the best is yet to come. This, evening, um, this afternoon, I instructed the kids to send out uh, um, the flyer to remind people that the program was starting. This evening, and in the process, somebody responded. Somebody that knew me long time ago, and I want you to read the message so that they will hear it with your mic. Hallelujah! Anytime I remember you as a as a pastor. I always give God the glory. I remember your, your, your words this, those, these days. And I thank God for the right time. Please keep the kingdom flag flying, brother. And I am grateful that you are one of the shepherds that is preaching the gospel of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You see... When I saw that guy's video, I related to him. And when this message came, I was meditating to get prepared for the service. And it struck my mind. And I said, God is so kind. God is so gracious. Jesus Christ is so good. When men count you out, he doesn't count you out. When people write you off, God never writes you off. Even when you write yourself off, God don't write you off. If we were to qualify by talent, education, or what we can do, I don't qualify to be a pastor. I don't qualify to preach the gospel that Jesus Christ paid for with his life. Are you hearing me? I don't. It still surprises me that I am actually preaching. Sometimes I actually ask myself, are you sure you are preaching? Because I never thought and I never knew that God will trust me with his word. Don't write yourself off. Encourage yourself and know that your life is valuable to God. If God can use somebody without limbs and somebody without hands, he can use you. It doesn't matter how many doors close before you. It doesn't matter how many people you trusted and they betrayed you. 
it doesn't matter how many education you have acquired with Christ you will count those things as nothing amen I pray that God that remember me will remember you God that was gracious to me will be gracious to you tonight for the time that we have we are gathered here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Revelation chapter Turn your Bibles to Revelations. Chapter 1, verse 9. There is this very special line that is very interesting that I John both your brother and companion in the tribulation and the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the world of God I want you to notice that he said we were in that island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ that is why we are here too we are here in great grace ministry for the word of God and for the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your brother in companion, your brother in tribulation, your brother in the kingdom, and your brother with patience. We are gathered in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ this is the reason you have churches everywhere because of the word of God and the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ this is why we are Christians John chapter 11 The title of the message is Drop Your Grave Clothing. Drop Your Grave Clothing. I said, Remove Your Grave Clothing. John chapter 11 Amen What is the title again? Drop your grave clothing Start from verse 41. Let's start from 40. 
Jesus said to her, this is the story of Lazarus, Martha and the sister Mary, when Jesus Christ met them. Jesus Christ said to her, did I not say to you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God? Jesus was asking one of them. He said, didn't I tell you if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Tell somebody, I will see the glory of God. I will see the glory of God in my life. I will see the glory of God in my family. Jesus Christ was asking, didn't didn't I tell you, didn't I say to you, that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you? Jesus Christ told them himself. They did not hear from somebody else's mouth. There was no pastor that preached this to them. They heard from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I told you, if you believe in me, you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. I say you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. Next verse. Then, they took then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus' intention of giving thanks to the Father is that those that were waiting and listening to him, hear him pray, might believe. That they might believe that God sent him. But before he said that, he asked Mary, did I tell you if you believe you will see the glory? Don't you think that those people that are ahead that will believe will equally see the glory? Their aim there was to see if it is possible. Somebody actually asks, this man that opened blind eyes, his friend is dead. Maybe he would have been able to open, he may, he may be able to save him if he was here. That they may believe. That they may believe. Have you not believed? You have believed. Therefore, the glory of God is yours. The glory is not a thing to desire. Your believing comes with glory. Your life is made for glory and not for shame. It's not because you are good. It is because Christ is good. Because Christ is glorious. Because Christ loves you. I want to give you all that he has. Next verse. And when he has said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Where was Lazarus? He was in the grave. Lazarus was in the grave. If you say Lazarus was in the grave, what does that mean? Does it mean that Lazarus was camping in the grave? He was dead. He was gone. 
And Jesus Christ called him as if he was sitting by his side. Lazarus comforts. Amen. Jesus Christ called him back to life. And Lazarus responded, May everything you call answer you in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ called Lazarus a dead body, a decaying body, a body without life. And they had Jesus. And Jesus says, As my Father has sent me, I am sending you. As my Father had me, I am sending you so that my Father will hear you. I say once again, May everything you call answer you. But Lazarus came. Lazarus answered Jesus and he came because Jesus commanded him to come forth and he came forth. But that did not remove the clothing from his body. The Bible says, and he was, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth Jesus said to them lose him and let him go amen drop your grave clothing Jesus said lose him and let him go was Jesus see praying no Jesus was talking to the people that were around lose him and let him go you see this story is not just a story is who we are in Christ Jesus. If you were not born again, when you were not born again, the Bible said we were dead to sin. At one time, we met Jesus, and Jesus took away our grave clothing. And he sent us to go remove other people's grave clothing clothing the message is that Jesus came to demonstrate to us that no matter what is dead with God it can come to life no matter how painful it has been how rough it has been Jesus has power over death and he has power over anything that is committed to him. Everything that represents grave clothing in your life, I command it to drop off you in Jesus' name. Anything that is bringing sadness, pain, that people will look at you and they will mourn. They will be angry in their spirits. Because Lazarus was dead. Lazarus wasn't feeling any pain. But Mary and the sister Madeline were the one that were feeling the pain. Are you here? They were the one that felt the pain. They were the one people were laughing at. I thought Jesus was their friend. I thought Jesus used to come to your house. Jesus opened people's eyes. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus cast out demons. How come he did not come to heal you? 
everything that is bringing shame to your life I declare in this season that we come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ came to demonstrate to us that he has come to restore us to God spiritually we were all dead spiritually we died not because of what we did we die because of the sin Adam passed down to us. And Jesus Christ used this to demonstrate that he is the resurrection and he is the life. If you believe, you will see that resurrection. When you got born again, you were redeemed from spiritual deaths. And the Bible says, this is just the beginning when he was called back to life his clothing were still hanging around him shame was still hanging around him it was possible that he has begun to smell because mary told jesus he had been there for four days by now he must have been stinking whatever stinks in your life may the spirit of God take it away from you Jesus Christ called him back to life but his clothes were still there the clothes still reminded that he was still tied from where he just came from what does that mean to us we have been redeemed we have received Christ and we have come to know that there is a glorious life that Christ has brought to our life but this glorious life is not without pain it's not without tribulation but he said I will be with you to the end of age that is God's promise. Amen. Amen. The next one, what it signifies is that Christ who is the resurrection and the life in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 2. If you have it, let's look at it. Romans chapter 8 verse 2 It said for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death it took away that clothes of sin and death from me and he took it away from you amen John chapter 10 verse 28 And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish I give them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands hallelujah hallelujah I said no one will snatch you out of God's hands no one will change God's plan for your life no devil in hell is strong enough to destroy your destiny everything that is not of god i command it to go out of your life jesus christ said if you believe you will see the glory he said if you believe you will have eternal life when you got born again eternal life was given to you 
you still live in this world you still live in the world that is decaying you still live in the world that is full of wickedness you were you, you were once wicked like them but god has brought you out from that life and he has filled you with his love tell somebody i am full of love my heart is full of love i am a compassionate person because i have the life of god in me i don't judge others as they ought to be judged because i wasn't judged as i ought to be judged if god really judges us if you reflect in your life if you reflect over your life things you have done where you have been if not for the grace of god if not for the mercies of god do you know where you have been amen god said he, will, he has given us eternal life and nothing can snatch it from his hand hallelujah god is able to deliver from physical debts god is able to deliver from physical debts and from spiritual debts god can raise us from spiritual debt to life and it doesn't cost him anything I said God can raise us from spiritual death to life and it won't cost him anything because he has already paid for it with the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 these are the promises Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 it said do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds the old man is talking about is the life that you lived before you met christ the grave clothing you were wearing before you met christ before he gave you the spiritual resurrection are you following me and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him hallelujah when he was unwrapped from those grave clothing lazarus that was decaying that ought to be smelling that people were running from became a brand new man it was an illustration to us that our life used to stink but christ draw us out from that life we used to live in darkness he brought us out from darkness and made us light we used to suffer shame he gave us his glory and now we have his glory i say you have his glory Amen. ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 and that you put on the new man which is created according to god you put on the new man which is created according to god in true righteousness and holiness 
when you put on the new man when you accept the life of Jesus Jesus gave you his righteousness and his holiness he gave you a life of glory he gave you his ability he gave you his compassion he gave you his love those things that used to make you mad those things that used to frustrate you you now look at them and they don't longer frustrate you because he gave you his grace hallelujah so it's our responsibility to live according to our new identity not according to the former life that we that we lived don't allow anybody to remind you or judge you based on who you used to be before you knew Christ your shortcoming has been perfected in Christ Jesus when you lay it down on the altar of God God will make it beautiful for you God specializes in turning those things that men count as rubbish and he makes it beautiful the Bible says he is the one that lifts from the dust and he sets among the priests of his people. He takes a nobody and makes him somebody. He takes someone that the society has rejected, condemned, written off, and he makes him his glory, his beauty. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, it says, God created man in his image. That image was corrupted with death. That image was corrupted with sin. That image was corrupted with sickness and diseases. Because of that, the relationship between man and God was far away. Christ now came and he restored us. Christ now came and gave us his holiness. And he said, he recreated us according to God's plan. According to God's image. He recreated us so that the Holy Spirit can now live in us so that God cannot have fellowship be- between us and that is why we preach the gospel it's not because we were too good he said therefore put on the new man which is created or which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness hallelujah Romans chapter 12 verse 2 I am showing you how progressive your relationship with God is after he took you off from the grave clothes Romans chapter 12 verse 2 he said do not be conformed to this world do not be conformed to this world what is he talking about he said don't settle and live according to the ordinary man don't get upset don't get mad don't get frustrated according or like the ordinary man like the ordinary woman do not be conformed to this world but transform by renewing your mind by renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God tell somebody I'm perfecting God's will is our responsibility 
to perfect God's will. It's my responsibility not to conform to the standard of this world. It doesn't matter how many people may try to drag you to your former life. He said, you refuse to live in that lower class. Live in the, in the higher realm of life. For the Bible says he has translated us and we are seated with him in glory. You are still here on earth. That doesn't mean that God has not given you glory. The Bible said you only hope for things that, are, that you have not yet received. Your spirit has been recreated. Your body is not recreated. You have to train your body to match your new identity that you now carry. Frustration is far away from you in Jesus' name. Your former life was a life that gets frustrated easily. He said for you not to get frustrated easily, you need to condition your mind with the word of God. You need to have fellowship with the word of God. You need to know that it is not your ability or your talent. It is the word of God that is in you that recreates you. It is the word of God that has become your strength. It is the word of God that has become your glory. It is the word of God that has become your righteousness. It is the word of God that has become your healing. You are walking in eternal life. The life of God is at work in you. You can only sustain your spiritual life with the word of God. It's the word of God that is the food for the spirit. If your spirit is strong, your body will not have dominion over your spirit. But when your spirit is weak, your body will have dominion over your spirit and you will conform to the standard of this world. Are you hearing me? So it's our responsibility to renew our mind consciously when something comes against you. Don't dwell on it. Don't shut your door and begin to weep and to mourn. No, 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 no. You are playing to Satan's schemes and you are succumbing to his tactics. But when something comes against you, take the word of God. Look to his promises. Look to the things God has said concerning you that you have put off your grave clothing and have put on the new life in Christ Jesus. A life that is full of glory. A life that is acceptable to God. A life that is beyond reproach. A life that is created after the image of God. Is our responsibility. Hallelujah. We are gathered. We are gathered to the word of God. And to the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Put off your grave clothing. And don't let anybody put it back on you. Don't allow anybody to put it back on you. Refuse to conform to the standard of this world. Refuse to accept defeat, failure. As part of your lifestyle. How? By renewing your mind. By staying with the word of God. The Bible says. Didn't I tell you. If you believe. You will see the glory. Didn't I tell you. If you believe. You will see the glory. What glory was he talking about? Was it just the glory to bring their brother back to life? No. It's more than that. So I'm telling you. Your life is meant for glory. 
your life is not judged by the things you go through. Your life is judged by the quality of Christ that is in you. Your life is no longer judged by the color of your skin. It's no longer judged by the talent you got. Your life is not judged by the life of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, for he loved us and he gave us his own life. When I started, I told you, no man qualifies to really preach this gospel to anyone. No man, if not for God's grace, none of us qualify to be his representation. It's a privilege, it's an honor to be called a servant of Jesus Christ. You are a servant of Jesus Christ, not because you are special, but he made you special. When you were dead in sin, when your life was a write-off, when you were smelling, God drew you with his love and made you beautiful. The Bible says in the Old Testament that there were two sisters. There were two sisters. And these two sisters, they were orphans. He said, when I picked you up, I picked you up from the pool of blood. When nobody could see your beauty, I saw your beauty. I took you and I washed you. I took you, I clothed you. I took you and I put a ring on your finger and a, a necklace on your neck. Now you are beautiful. Now you are attractive. Others are now seeing you and you have deserted me and gone after other men. You know, he was using it to illustrate our life in Christ. We were rotten. We were smelling. We were not good for anything. He made us. He took us from our blood. He cleansed us with his own blood. He gave us his own life. He made our life count worthy. He made our life beautiful. Now others can see and they can condemn us from afar, but he doesn't condemn us. You are perfect before him. You are loved of God. He said, the love that my father, with the love you have loved me, I have equally given them the same love. So God loves you as much as he loved Jesus. He loved Jesus so much. But Jesus went to Calvary. Jesus suffered pain. Your pain that you suffer now, they are nothing compared to the glory of God that is in you. Are you hearing me? Tell somebody the, the days of pain and shame is over. I refuse to put on my grave clothes. I refuse. You see, the grave clothing is a mark of the decaying world. Is a mark that reminds you where you come from. But the Bible says that we are born not after the flesh, but we are born with the seed of the word of God, which perish not, that is indestructible. Your life is indestructible. No Satan, no demon will be able to cut your life short because it's not in him to do it. You will fulfill the numbers of your days in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Daniel chapter number six, number 12, before we close. Daniel. Chapter number 12. Chapter number 12. Start from verse 2. Somebody read for me, please. Okay, start from verse 1. Nobody have a Bible? Okay. And at that time, Michael shall stand up. The great priest who stand watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Tell somebody there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. Which people will be delivered? Everyone whose name is found in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. Hallelujah. Some to everlasting life. Some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Hallelujah. Verse, verse 4. He said, But you, Daniel, shut up the books and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase amen or the bible verse is that many we run to and fro but what will happen? Knowledge will increase. But he instructed, he instructed Daniel to close the book and seal it and put it away. The last verse of Daniel chapter 12. But you go your way to the end. For you shall rest and we arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. What a scripture. What a scripture. He said, if your name is written in that book, if your name is written in that book, you will be delivered. Tell somebody I'm delivered. Because I have believed. He said, close the book and put it away. Knowledge will increase. How can knowledge increase when the secret that has just been given you, it has been sealed up? Are you following me? What he was saying was that in the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ came, the knowledge of God was limited. He said, in the last days, knowledge will increase. The book has been opened. Christ has opened the book for us. 
That is why we can stand today and declare the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is why we can go about telling people because the book is open. Eternal life is now available. Great clothes is no longer needed. Are you following me? He said you go until the end. For you shall rest. What he was saying, you will die. You shall rest. You will die. He said, but when you die, yours will be different because you know. Are you following me? Because he knew who he was. He said, but for you shall rest and we rise to your inheritance. I say you will rise to your inheritance. You will, hire, you will rise to the inheritance of deliverance. You will rise to the inheritance of salvation. You will rise to the inheritance of glory. You will rise to the inheritance of the new life in Christ Jesus. He said you will receive your inheritance. This is our preaching. This is the gospel. Because the book is open. It wants us to know that we are no longer in that age. We are no longer in that time of condemnation. We are no longer in that age where we are judged by who we used to be. We are no longer in that age where things can still subdue us and cause us to conform to the standard of this world. Tell somebody said I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. Well, we will stop because it's getting late. Let us spring. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you because the book is open and the grave clothing has been removed in your name. We thank you, Father, for your word is our strength. Your word is our joy. Your word has imparted eternal life and glory to our life. We declare, Father God, that the temptations of these days the tribulation of the present time will not tie us to our past. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, you said, everyone that believe will see the glory of God. I pray, Father, everyone that is under the sound of my voice, that glory will go with them. They that have believed and have received you as their Lord and Savior, Father, let that glory manifest in their life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, you went about, you healed the sick. You opened blind eyes. And you have sent us to do the same. I pray for anyone that is afflicted in their physical body. That is afflicted in their mind. That is afflicted in their emotion. That you heal them and touch them tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. You gave us the Holy Spirit our comforter. Father, where man cannot comfort, let the Holy Spirit comfort them. In the name of Jesus, let them never be lonely again. Because you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let them know at every point of their life, at every turn of their life, that you are with them and you are helping them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. We have to pray. I received uh, a text from...